Hi, it's Bruce T here with another podcast. This podcast is based on Psalm 1. It talks about the advice and the blessing of the psalm. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of wicked will perish. So first of all, we need to set the scene. We are always going to be faced with choices. God has given us free will. And these choices include the people that we associate with. Some choices are forced upon us. We get a job, we find we're an apprentice like I did. And then we go into the world of work where there's people there between 20 and 30 years old living a worldly type of life and they really want you to follow them. And so you've got a choice whether you do or whether you don't. And also there's a pressure to conform. Some choices are a necessity. Maybe you're a police person and you have to go into places where you would rather not go to sort out people and to solve crimes. But at the end of that, you can go home, hopefully leaving your job at the door and going home and spending time with the people that you love, your family and your kids. Sometimes you may have to go into a dangerous situation. I remember reading a book about a man who was ex-special forces and he went into this place and he called it harm's way. He had to go and rescue people, people who were hostages and things like that. But he went and he rescued them and he went into harm's way. That was a choice that he made, but it was following his training and things like that. Now, the Bible does say that we are in the world, but we are not of the world. So we must be aware. In Jesus' high priestly prayer in John 17, 16 to 18, it says, They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. We need to be in the world, as Jesus said, we are in the world and we have to adapt with the norms of the world. We want to keep the norms that Jesus says, his example and the way that he wants us to live. But we're faced with this dilemma all the time. We need wisdom. And the Bible says in James 1, 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. So this is a promise of God that we need to pray about and we need to receive this wisdom. The psalm goes on to talk about the counsel of the wicked. And this could be those who plan to commit crimes, atrocities, and not to associate with those who are obviously leading sinful lives as described in the Ten Commandments. We'll just highlight just a couple of the commandments. You shall not make idols. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbour. You shall not cover. And then there's the word scoffer that the psalm uses. And this is someone who jeers or mocks or treats something with contempt or calls out in derision. Just imagine you leave the Bible study on a night at church with your Bible under your arm and you come across a group of people that want to take the mickey out of you, ask you why you're doing this, why you're doing that, why you not living like us, and we need the peace of God to get through those situations. Where do we spend our leisure time? Do we spend our leisure time where God had like us to? Or are we going out into the wrong places that we've described? Obviously, God wants us to spread the message and advise people, but not to stay consistently in their presence. We need to be in the presence of the Lord. We do this by obeying his instructions as against those of the world. Jesus spent time with sinners, tax collectors, prostitutes. For what reason? For the reason to tell them about the kingdom of God. And a lot of them accepted what Jesus said and started to believe in him and turn their lives around and live a life that's pleasing to Jesus. 
and to God. In Romans 12, 2, it says, Do not be conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. In verse 2, it says about the man, But his delight is in the law of the Lord. He wants to please God and receive the benefits. In the early church there were people called hermits, and they used to go into places in a desert or some secluded place, because in the cities and the towns the church was preaching some other gospel, and it was not what Jesus had originally taught. So they went away in the desert to spend time with God and find out what God wanted them to do. And in time, people followed them and communities were built up. In these communities, they were to study the word of God, meditate on the word of God, pray, praise and worship and enjoy being with other Christians. We can enjoy being with other Christians, can't we? In our church families, in our house groups, when we meet like-minded people who want to follow Jesus and put into practice the things that he talked about as he was our example. On a good tree, you'll find that fruit grows. And the results of our ministry, of our interaction with other people, fruit should grow. And that is, people become more like Jesus. They accept Jesus as their Lord and Saviour, become born again and are built up, and to help them become more like Jesus. The psalm also talks about prosperity. Now, this is not the prosperity gospel where people desire a Mercedes and a Rolex and a most flashy suit, but that which God promises. God does promise to prosper us, but it's not like the people of the prosperity gospel. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. In Matthew 6, 33, the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. God knows what we need and is able to supply it. He knows we need shelter. He knows we need food. He knows we need human company. And it says in 1 Thessalonians 5, if a man doesn't work, he shouldn't eat. So a man needs to get a job and be able to supply his own needs and his family's and have something to share or to give away, providing he is able. And he doesn't need to live at the expense of somebody else. In verses 4, 5 and 6, he talks about our destination. We know that Jesus will return. And we thank you, Jesus, that you are going to return. And he knows the way that we take. So if we've accepted Jesus as our Lord and Saviour, we wait for his return. Whether we are raptured away or whether we die in this life, we know that we will be with Jesus. The Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. So going back to Psalm 1 then, So be like the man who doesn't walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. So do seek the Lord. Do ask Jesus to become your Lord and Saviour and be the model and prime example of your life. And do learn to live like Jesus, not forgetting the Holy Spirit who comes and resides in the believer after they have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Saviour and will help you and guide you on your way. Do love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul and your strength and love your neighbour as yourself. So until next time, Bye for now.